So we know we've got good compression, we know we've got good spark, and we know our timing is at least very, very close, if not right on. So the next thing we want to verify here is the crank signal. We're going to use our lab scope and actually check the crank signal and the cam signal. Now our crank signal is mounted down in between the timing belt, but the wire comes up here. It's a three-wire sensor. If you look at the electrical diagram, there's power and ground and the signal wire. We used a power probe to determine which one of these had the 12 volts and which one was the ground, and we determined then that our blue wire is the signal wire, so we've tapped into that for the crank sensor. At the cam sensor we did the same thing. It's got power, ground, and the signal wire. We identified which one was the signal wire and we're tapped into that. In the signature test, it tells us that this should be a square wave. It should be a nice, clean, up and down, on and off square wave. Now from here we're going to go to view our meter. When the meter comes on, you'll see we've got, we're tapped into both signals, but we're only reading the yellow. Now at the top, I've got the crank signal on the yellow and the cam sensor on the red. So I'm reading the yellow, drag that up here a little bit. Now the red I need to turn on, so I'm going to go to traces, go to trace 4, which is the red, and display that. Now I've got the red as well. So we can actually look at both signals. Now we're going to start the car. Now before I start, I want to show you what our trace is set at. We're set at 20 volts. We're going to leave that there. And we've got a sweep set at 500 milliseconds. We're going to leave that there. Now we're going to crank the engine. Now I'm going to freeze that. And there you can see the signal. Again, again, the, the yellow is the crank. The red is the cam. Now this should be a good clean. Now this is a pretty good signal up on here. But if you look at these crank signals, that's an on, but it doesn't know exactly when it is shut off. On, but it doesn't know when it's shut off. That's a very disturbed signal on that. Now I'm going to unfreeze this and I'm going to change my sweep. Let's go down to two seconds where we can see more of it. Okay. Now here's a two second interval. You can see the crank signal. It is not clean. We've got disturbance at the top. Those are not good, but the worst part of this signal is this area right in here. Uh, let me move this so we can see it. When you freeze this like that, you can actually move your signal back and forth because it's a still frame now. But you can see these aren't good. They're not terrible. But these right here, there's no way this engine is going to run with a crank signal like that. Now, even the cam sensor has some disturbance in it. But it probably still would be able to determine when to squirt the fuel. So we know we've got a bad crank sensor. We've got evidence of that. So now we're going to put in a crank sensor and we'll show you what the signal should look like with a good one. Okay, now we've got the crank sensor replaced. We're going to start the car. Okay, we'll shut the car off. We froze this image. Now you can see this is with the car actually running. Now we've got a good clean on signal. We're reading zero volts. It's going all the way to ground. We're going up to the min max is showing up going up to 5.91. So that's the highest it's got here. So we've got a good clean on signal, good clean off. We're going to zero, so we've got a good clean ground and we've got a good power signal. As I move this across, you can see this is with the engine running. That's where we started the car. And this is with it idling. Now I just want to show you a couple comparisons here. I'm going to close this. Now I'm going to go back on my Vera so I can save a lot of stuff here. I'm going to go back into my screenshots and show you some of those captures that we had. Now here's a screen capture of before we changed the crank signal or with the bad crank sensor. And if you look at this, we did not have clean ons, 
we did not have clean offs and we had this real disrupted signal but you can also see that over in here if you go over to the yellow trace which this one is go to the yellow numbers because see this is the red trace you refer to the red numbers so going to the yellow numbers over here you see that we rarely went all the way to ground most of the time it was up in here in the, in the off position we never went to ground follow that over there over here this was the signal off but it never went to ground ground should have went way down here at this point now let's go to the new signal the new crank sensor now this is the new crank sensor I've got the sweep different because the engine was running but as you can see here we've got good clean ons power cross good clean offs and we're going to ground you can see that we're going to ground every time now every once in a while you're gonna see a few little aberrant tracks in here those are okay they're not really gonna cause a problem with the old sensor in there the computer never saw it going all the way to ground or rarely saw it going all the way to ground that's why it wouldn't start and run so when you're diagnosing cars you have lots of information available to you. The trick is gathering that information. Gather your information, look for the evidence, and the evidence will lead you to the problem.